What in the world did we just witness last night? UFC fight night, Aaron Blanchfield versus Manon Fior. Guys, this was... <laughs> This was literally off an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but Keeping Up with the UFC. I can't remember a UFC card, fight night, whatever, that has had more controversy, more drama from all angles than this card had last night. And I do want to point out, there were a few highlights from, you know, last night. Everyone's kind of just shitting on the card, trashing on it. I do think that there were some bright spots, which we're going to highlight throughout the video. I'm not going to go through the entire card. I'm going to highlight, you know, kind of the controversial, crazy moments that we saw. But what an, just what a crazy card. And I want to start by saying the little Oompa Loompa in there, man. Gary Copeland, the referees, taking a lot of heat last night and this morning. I want to point out that he was dealt some tough situations last night. And I want to go over those first before we kind of hop into this because and the Anton Turkali versus Aslan stoppage that he had, I don't dislike that stoppage. I thought it was a good stoppage because Aslan landed that nasty right hand. Turkali, you know, was going down. At that point, Anton was already out of it. You could kind of see that he was dazed. He was out of it. He was already kind of concussed. And anything after that, guys, when we're talking about heavyweights, light heavyweights, those would have been concussive follow-up shots for Aslan. I thought it was a good stoppage by Gary Copeland. But then we go on to the Herbert Burns situation where, um, you know, he, there, there was the first groin shot, you know, gives him a warning, takes a point on the second one. I thought that was kind of stern, but I get it. Then he goes out there against Chris Weidman. That whole situation was an absolute debacle and fumble all none together. First of all, Chris Weidman, close your damn hands, man. You poke Bruno Silva in the eye how many times? Three, four, five times, whatever it was. And it's kind of hard to, you know, first of all, you know, we, we talk about the glove stuff with the UFC and this and that, but just close your hands. Every time he backed up, he's sticking his fingers out. Poke the guy in the eye how many times? And then Chris Weidman has the audacity to be like, well, don't drop down in dramatic fashion. That was like the 10th time you poked the guy in the eye. What else do you want him to do? He can probably barely see this morning because of you, Chris Weidman. And it's unfortunate because Chris Weidman was winning the fight outside the eye pokes, man. I, I had him up, you know, 2-0 heading into that third round. So Chris Weidman looked way better than what I thought he was going to heading into that matchup. We know Bruno Silva's a guy that tends to not open up enough, which I was concerned, you know, coming into this matchup. And he was letting Weidman get ahead of him. Weidman's head movement was good. You know, Weidman improved, man. He looked good, but those eye pokes were nasty. And the UFC's got to do something about this because we're not just talking. Everyone wants to point out groin strikes and how bad they are. Eye pokes are by far worse. I know that we're talking about the goods getting hit, man, but at least there's a cup in the way. When these eye pokes are coming out and they're straight and they're deep like that, that's craziness. It's craziness. Takes away from your vision. And you can't tell me after a guy gets poked in the eye that they come back and, and, and they're like, they're 100% in it like they were before getting poked in the eye. Like a lot of guys are trying to blink it out in these different things. Overall, that was craziness. Absolute craziness. And the fact that it was a stoppage. TKO from Chris Weidman originally. It should have been a timeout. You know, whatever. They should have went to neutral corners. And honestly, I don't even know if Bruno Silva would have been able to continue after that. Because that was the umpteenth million eye poke from Weidman. But then it was eventually overturned, you know, to a unanimous decision win by Chris Weidman. I thought it should have been a no contest, in my opinion. So that's my thoughts on that. Again, tough situation for Gary Copeland. Could it have been handled better? Maybe. But again, not, not the referee's fault that he was even warning Weidman. And Weidman still kept sticking his damn fingers out there, poking people in the eye. That was awful. Then we kind of go on. Jacob Malkoon, Andre Petrosky. Everyone is pointing out the fact that Petrosky knocked himself out. That is what happens when you shoot with your head down, with looking down at the ground, just like Ben Askren did and got te got knocked the hell out with a flying knee by Jorge Masvidal. That is, you know, shot him with his head down. Jacob Malkoon's trying to hit bump, which Jacob Malkoon, by the way, was piecing up Andre Petrosky on the feet. Let's not forget about that. Let's stop taking the credit away from Jacob Malkoon. It was a good performance by Malkoon. He goes to hip bump, boom, dome, right on the hip, basically kind of dazed him or whatever it was. And Jacob Malkoon gets him out there. Don't take anything away from J Jacob Malkoon because Petrosky shot him with his head down and knocked, and knocked his dome right off the hip. Overall, good performance by Jacob Malkoon. Good win for him. Two guys that were kind of on the come up in the division. Now we have some clarity in that because Jacob Malkoon's striking looked good. I know Petrosky's not a world beater in terms of the striking. He's known for his grappling, his wrestling. But overall, Jacob Alcoon, he defended the takedown well against Petrosky. Goes out there. His jab was money. You can tell he's been working with Robert Whitaker, I'm sure, on that. So shout out to Malkoon. Good win. Okay. Herbert Burns. <laughs> I, 
tweeted this out last night, man, about Herbert Burns. I have never seen a fighter with more unlucky, unfortunate, whatever you want to call it, situations than Herbert Burns. And what I'm going to say is not meant to be disrespectful towards Herbert Burns. It's just my opinion. Herbert Burns kind of reminds me of a Cron Gracie, right? It's not, I'm not saying he's Cron Gracie in terms of the submission. I'm using it as a comparison because Cron Gracie is what is an incredibly high-level jujitsu player. Herbert Burns is an incredibly high-level jujitsu player, but he's not a fighter. He's not a fighter. He's been in there numerous times, and he it kind of gets overlooked because he's the brother of Gilbert Burns. Him and Gilbert are very different. I label Gilbert a fighter. Gilbert is a warrior. He's a dog. Whereas Herbert, it just seems to, man, a little bit of adversity presents itself, and then the fight's over from there. And that is exactly what you saw last night. It's just you can't... I hope nobody bet on Herbert Burns, man, because you just can't seem to trust him in there. He has a lot of unfortunate situations. You know, first of all, the first knee to the groin gets a warning, does it again, gets a point taken. I'm like, here we go, man. If it's not an injury or it's not some craziness happening, it's just unfortunate luck after luck for for Herbert Burns. I think the UFC is probably going to cut him after this matchup. It would make sense, in my opinion. I think we've seen enough in terms of him in the UFC, in my opinion. But nonetheless, just... You know, great performance by Julio Ars. Get Going in there, getting the job done, getting a big win over a guy like Herbert Burns. I know Herbert's not a world beater. He does have good jiu-jitsu. He has a name because of his brother. Good win in his department. Okay, Nate Landwehr, Jamal Emmers. We were talking about this on my live, man. I know a lot of people are kind of pointing out Jamal Emmers winning by decision, just having his way with Nate Landwehr. Nate Landwehr, man, he's becoming one of those guys that people are going to start tuning in whether he wins or loses because one, he's good on the microphone and his fighting style is exciting and it's kind of starting to remind me of that guy back there a little bit. Gets tagged with some good shots early. He has to weather the storm early. Guys have a lot of success. Embers was dancing around on the outside. Good speed, good right hand, was able to hurt Landwehr pretty bad, cut him open a little bit. Nonetheless, Landwehr, man, he starts to melt you as the fight progresses. He starts to push forward, starts to make you uncomfortable, doesn't let you fight at range the whole time. Was able to land a nasty check left hook that we saw. That that was that was slick. That was nasty. Then a nasty right uppercut. Nate Landwehr, man, I think I think this, this guy needs a big name next to, in, in the division. I think that he's a guy that the fans are, uh, are starting to kind of get behind. He's got a personality. He's got a fun fighting style. He's kind of must-see TV. And I, every time he fights... I was happy to see him get a featured prelim slot because you know a lot of people are watching that. That That's kind of that spot that Dominic Cruz has always talked about as being something. I know it wasn't a pay-per-view last night, but right before the main card, a lot of people kind of start to tune in. It was a great performance by Nate Landwehr. And like I said, it's kind of remind me, uh, reminding me of a Diaz. Takes a little bit of damage, not afraid to push the pace, move forward, eat a shot to give a few. And he's just starting to melt people, man. And as the competition steepens, though, it does it does worry me considering how easy uh, he is to hit. But nonetheless, Nate Lam- uh, Nate Lamware, man, he's a fun guy and definitely going to add some life into a division that needs it. So um, must see TV, Nate Lamware, man. Okay, Chidi Bang Bang. Chidi Ajokwani gets the win over Reese McKee. I want to talk about this fight because... I think Chitty Bang Bang, man, he's got a fun style. He's got some really good striking. He's a good kickboxer, but it's time that we see him start to open up a little bit. I think he's a guy that could add some some excitement to the division. I really think that he's a good, clean striker. I think he's fun to watch. The problem is he doesn't sit on anything. He's floating around on the outside, and he's not committing enough. And I think if Chitty Bang Bang would commit to some things, man, I think he could knock some people out and really start to kind of you know, make a name for himself in in the division because I just don't understand, you know, Reese McKee is not a world beater. And yes, that should have been a unanimous 30 to 27 decision in my opinion, but someone gave it for Reese McKee. I don't know how you do that. I don't know what judge, you know, it doesn't make sense to me, but Chidi Bang Bang Man, if he somehow was watching this video, start to open up a little bit. I know it's easier said than done, but if he starts to open up a little bit, starts to let his hands go, starts to land some of those combinations, starts to really put some steam on some of these shots, I can see him finishing people and kind of really starting to build himself up in the division because he's a good technical striker. I would just like to see him get some finishes. Okay. Kyle Nelson, Bill Algio. First of all, I thought that was Guram in there, in there but it was Kyle Nelson, Good performance by him, man. Taking care of Bill Algio. He's got that karate style. He's fast. He's slick. I know people were kind of pointing that early stoppage. And, and again, another another refereeing kind of situation that we saw last night. Just adding into the drama. But Kyle Nelson, guys, I know he called out Nate Lamware. I think that's a fun fight. I don't know if the UFC goes that route because 
I think they're going to try to get Nate Lamware a big fight next. Hopefully they do because Nate Lamware is kind of creeping up there in terms of being a big name at this point. Nonetheless, Kyle Nelson's been balling out, man. He's been showing up. He's been, you know, he, he looks good. His hands have gotten better. He's got good power. Great win by Kyle Nelson. Okay, the Weidman Bruno Silva fight. I kind of was just talking about the eye pokes, you know, and it kind of gets overshadowed for Weidman because I, I had it 2 0 Weidman heading into the third. You know, Bruno Silva was seeming to struggle a little bit against Weidman. Weidman looked fast, he looked good. But overall, man, you can't poke somebody in the eye that many times. So I just, to me, it should have been a no contest. I know that Weidman, it was a finish, but then, you know, it gets overturned to, uh, to a unanimous decision. I thought it should have been a no contest. I kind of gave my thoughts on that one already, but yeah. Okay, Joaquin Buckley, Vicente Luque. What a weird, 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 weird ending to that fight because I, I watched that this morning again. You know, I watched that this morning again and I don't see where Vicente Luque was hurt. Where was he hurt? I don't understand. He was down, just covering up, wasn't looking to move, wasn't looking to get out of dodge. Buckley's just landing ground and pound and... Luke's not moving. He wasn't even trying to scramble, change position, try to bring his head forward, try to grab a hold of, of Buckley's legs, try to, uh, you know, cause a scramble. Nothing. Wasn't moving at all. Just sat there content covering up on the ground. I don't know if he felt some, something that, you know, just was like, he's like, I'm, I'm just done. I'm out of here. Like, I don't know what happened. It was a very bizarre stoppage. I know people are pointing out rigged and all this and that. I don't know. Very weird, very, very weird per stop, uh, stoppage. I give you that. But I pick Joaquin Buckley to win that fight by stoppage. And it's exciting to see him. You know, he's kind of like that Kevin Holland thing. Coming down from middleweight. You know, he had some success at middleweight. He's finally in, you know, in a groove at 170 pounds. He looks fast. He looks powerful. Um, Joaquin Buckley's got a ranking next to his name. So I think that he's going to, you know, maybe him versus Jeff Neal is a good matchup to see next. But overall, shout out to Joaquin Buckley, man. Great performance. Good win. Um, really weird ending, though. I, I, I got to point that one out. Okay. Manon Fjord and Aaron Blanchfield. I picked Fjord to win this fight. Overall, obviously boring, but looks like Fjord is going to be punching her ticket to a title shot, getting a win over the number two Aaron Blanchfield. Fjord coming off that win over uh, Thug Rose prior, you know, back to back big wins by Fjord, you know, representing France, man. She's done, she's doing it right. She's getting the job done. Uh, but at the end of the day, boring, you know, back to back boring wins for her overall. But again, it's not like in the division, there's a steep hill to climb in terms of getting a title shot. I think that she will be in uh, in line next. I know that this was a tough matchup considering the grappling uh, that Aaron Blanchfield possesses. But overall, Fjord got the job done, man. But I want to hear what you all think down in the comments. Because overall, this was a crazy drama-filled card. The controversy, you know, back and forth. Really bizarre. But like this video, comment your thoughts below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I appreciate you all. See you next time.